What's Google Plus? Google Plus is basically the company's answer to social networking, and in many respects, it's kind of the new direction that Google's moving in. So, before we get too much into it, here's the homepage. It's just plus.google.com, and if you're not signed in, uh, this is what you'll get. Uh, you obviously see the banner, and you can take tours of uh, what Google Plus is, what it has to offer. Uh, but there's three main parts to it, and obviously those three main parts are displayed here for you. Circles, Hangouts, and Sparks. And we'll talk a little bit more about how each one of these little uh, features work with Google+. Uh, but the real big question for a lot of people is, why should I care about Google+. Well, let's take a little bit of time to talk about another big social networking site, Facebook, that we're all familiar with. When Facebook first came out, um, it was intended to be for a target audience, college students. Uh, however, now it's just grown to a huge mesh of collaboration, but it's mostly for people to kind of connect with each other, to talk to each other. Um, in terms of real work, I'm not really confident enough to say that Facebook is a platform for um, real work. However, I have uh, done online meetings through Facebook, so there's hit and misses. At any rate, uh, I like to think of Facebook as very much a place where I go to get away from things, not a serious work environment. And that's kind of where Google Plus comes in. It's kind of a new spin on what social networking is. Um, and one of the first things that many of you might notice is, well, it looks a lot like Facebook. And that's because it kind of does. It's simple. I think the layout works, and I think that's what the people at Google thought too. And so here, whenever you log on, this is what you call the stream, uh, and Facebook is called the newsfeed. And I'm going to draw many parallels between Google Plus and Facebook because, well, it makes understanding it all a little easier. So here we are in the stream, and you can see a bunch of a uh, bunch of little notifications from people uh, inside my uh, my group, um, and those groups are called circles. Um, in Facebook, we have friends. Um, in this case, we have. Uh, in many ways we have friends too, but collaborators in circles. So let's go over to the circles. So basically this is everyone who I'm in Google Plus with. Now, Google Plus allows you to basically create subgroups amongst everyone else inside of your Bing network. So you can see that I have all these people who are linked to me. Uh, Jeremy Allen, Courtney, Joe, even Darth Vader's in here. Now, depending on who I select, for instance Darth Vader, you'll see that my friend circle at the very bottom highlights. Okay, And the same thing with family and people in multiple circles like Jeremy who's on the Johnsonian staff and is also in my friend circle. And so basically you're allowed to group people in different networks. This is pretty much the same way you can group friends inside Facebook. Um, in Facebook, you can create subgroups. You can call one family. You can call one friends. And basically allows you to control what kind of content, i.e. things in your stream, that you want to share with people. So if I have something that I only want to share with my family, I can share it with only that particular circle. And I won't have to uh, expose the rest of uh, the people in my other circles to that content. At the same time, I can also choose to selectively chat with members in the circle, or I can choose to publish to the world, which would basically be uh, everyone in any of these circles. And so that's basically how it works. Concept is not too different. Um, it's just a different way to look at it. Facebook, we have groups. This is groups too, but Google calls it circles. The profile. Again, similarities to Facebook, but I don't think that's all that bad because, again, this type of layout works. You have a profile picture, your name, and your stream. What have you been up to? 
You can also see people who are in my circles, i.e. my friends, and you can also see people who have added me to their circles. Um, so this is another layer uh, beyond Facebook, um, where you kind of see who's, in, who's friends with each other. Okay? And so as we go down, everything seems, uh, well, pretty straightforward. You're able to share content with each other, uh, pictures, links, videos, stuff like that. Now, there's a few other differences. Um, the share button here, normal. The comment thing, low, uh, normal. However, we see plus one. Now, the plus one is Google's, uh, is part of the project, the Google Plus project, um, and it's basically what's going to be taking over the like button. Okay, um, the plus one button allows you to promote something. Um, so if I was to plus one something, it would be the equivalent of me liking it. However, it's not just uh, meant to be inside of the uh, the Google Plus sphere. Um, plus one is also something that Google's released to web developers. And so I'm going to go to mytgnow.com to show you what I mean. Web developers now have the option to put in the plus one button. Okay? This means that you publicly endorse something. So when you're logged on to your Gmail account, you're able to plus one something and it adds it to it. Now the idea is, at least from Google's point of view, that sites that get more plus ones will probably have greater relevance in their search results. So this is a great tool for marketing your website. In the past, it was like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. That promoted the group's presence on that separate site. The plus one button allows you to promote your group, i.e., in my case, the Johnsonian, in terms of Google search results. You can see the same thing if I go to google.com. And I type in something like CNN. Because I've activated plus one inside my search, I, I can publicly endorse or recommend a page. Again, the thought is, pages that get more plus ones will show up in higher relevance to the search query. So it's a neat little concept. The about me, photos, videos, and plus ones are also available. So you can see what I've publicly plused one. The idea in this is your friends, i.e. people in your circles, can see what you've recommended and you can see what they've recommended. From that point, you to kind of mesh together networks, to kind of bounce people around to content that's been endorsed rather than just random content. And then photos. Now I like the photos uh, application a lot because it's kind of interactive and it's a new spin. Obviously I have profile photos and photos I've uploaded. Profiles of me and Vigo Mortensen in this case. However, you can see that there's a little bit of animation play to it. So if I click on my profile pictures, you can see that they come up and Google Plus has done something neat where instead of having everything tiled to the same size, they kind of um, put the pictures in terms of upload size. It's kind of an artsy thing. I like it. The same is true for people inside your circles. So here I can see on the top row, people inside my circles uh, who have uploaded pictures or tagged people in pictures. Uh, so for example, uh, Brian here has uploaded a picture from the Reservoir Dogs. Um, it's a great movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Um, and you can see that as I hover over each individual picture, I'm able to see who is the person responsible for the content and whether or not there's been comments on the photos. So for example, on this photo from Brian, I can see there's a little glyph in the top right hand corner with the number two, which means there's two comments. And indeed, if I click on it, you can see that there's two comments added over here. This also coupled with the fact that there's a new interface. The second I click on the image, um, kind of what uh, Facebook did a, a while ago was to change up uh, how they display photos. And so Google's taken it with a kind of a shadow box effect, um, which is kind of neat. And I can click through and I can go through that row of pictures I was looking through. So obviously I was at this one. And when I click next, it progressed over to Nicholas's photo, back to Brian, and then this is one that Aaron put up. So neat. Um, again, I like it because it seems a little bit more interactive and it's fresh. At the end of the day, a photo is a photo, comments on a photo are comments on a photo. But I think that Google uh, deserves a little bit of kudos by taking something, which is very much an old idea, and putting a new fresh spin on it, which I like. It's an artsy touch. Let's go back to the stream. And again, here we're able to see uh, a little bit of the features. Um, 
we already kind of discussed circles. Um, and I can actually click on friends over here in the stream, family, or TJ. And I can actually select my stream to display, uh, display content from people inside that stream. Or I can just click on the general stream, which is everyone in my circles. Again, it's all about customizing uh, the content that you want to see. Now, the next thing was Hangouts. Uh, Hangouts is basically Google's answer to, well, interactive chats. Now, we've all heard a little bit of the rumors of Facebook coming out with video chat, and we're all probably familiar with Skype's version of video chat. Hangouts is very much similar. Uh, I don't have time right now to go into a Hangout, but maybe in the future we'll display Hangouts. However, it's a really, really neat interface. You can always go to plus.google.com to look at their tour of it. But essentially, it's a really neat interface that allows simultaneous video chat between multiple people, and it allows you to both have chat uh, and able to share YouTube videos, stuff like that. Um, in the early testing that we did, um, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, uh, everything's pretty good. Uh, there's a few bugs uh, in terms of uh, streaming, but I think a lot of that had to do with internet speed more than anything else. And you can start a Hangout by just clicking the button Start Hangout and then inviting people. You can also go mobile. Now I think right now it should be just available for the major phones. But essentially, you still have the same ability to take Google Plus with you on your mobile device. It's a really neat thing, just like Facebook. And of course, invites. And that's right, Google Plus is uh, by invite only, uh, and that's because it's still very much in a beta phase, a testing phase, if you will. Uh, and until we come out of that phase, um, I think right now everyone's going to have to wait for an invite from someone who's already in Google Plus, or you can ask for an invite by signing up on their page. All right, there's one other feature. Uh, that they highlighted, and that's Sparks. Sparks is basically a way of getting information that you're interested in. So I did that by clicking on the Sparks tab over here. Now, when you first sign up for Google+, Plus or you first get into Google+, Plus, you're given a few options. Cycling, fashion, recipes. This is all content geared to a certain subject matter. So let's click on recipes. What you're going to see is content from, well, the web that's geared towards you. So the latest content in recipes came from the Washington Post this morning. And you can actually go through and read through the content you're interested in. I can also set up content or sparks that are relevant to my interests. So for example, computer science. By setting computer science to one of my sparks, I can go through and read news trending in there. It's kind of like customizing the Google News feature. It's just delivering it all on the same platform rather than you having to bounce from service to service. So rather than me having to go to my news, I can kind of have the news displayed here, or at least quick tidbits of it. I really like this feature because, again, it's kind of that one-stop shop feel. Like many people uh, like to have integration, and uh, the interesting thing in social networking is over the past few years, we went from having, ooh, Facebook, ooh, Twitter, to now, oh, man, I have a Facebook and a Twitter, uh, which, would, which would be very eloquently described as a first-world problem. I have too many social networks. However, Google's trying to uh, help you out by consolidating you to all their services so you don't have to keep signing on the different accounts. Anyway, Sparks is something I think is really, really neat. Uh, and, you know, it's just a good way to show how they're able to make it interactive. And, of course, there's chat. Now, this is basically just a straight-up Gmail chat right there for you, showing your friends that are either on Google+, and if they are on Google+, they're going to show up here, or people who are just friends through Gmail. Works in the same way. Video chat still applies. Um, so, all, overall, pretty streamlined. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you with the changes Google's been making over the past few weeks in lieu of Google+, and that would be the Omnibar. What is it? Well, if you are a Gmail user, you probably noticed some changes. Over the past few months, uh, you can probably remember the first big change was the little options bar changing, and now we have a new Omnibar altogether. Now, if you're on Google+, you'll see plus your name. Otherwise, you'll still have the traditional web, Gmail, everything else. So, let me go to Google.com. So obviously, here are a few changes. Um, looking through, uh, you can customize the background and everything. Nothing is new. Um, if you're on Google Chrome like I am, you'll see changes like this. Audio search. Bananas. 
there you go. Ooh, it's neat. Um, you can talk to Google now. You can even go to Google Images and drag a picture in from your desktop and search it. Anyway, that's neat. Um, but the Omnibar allows you to basically stay signed on. This is the notifications area. So if you get a notification from a Google Plus, just like someone has posted onto your stream or someone commented on your photo, you'll get a number here. I can view my account settings and sign out. I can update a status from either Google Plus or from a service like Gmail. And I can also sign out and uh, basically query all my new information. So bottom line, Google Plus is kind of a new direction that Google's moving in, trying to integrate social networking. Now the big question is, well, do we, uh, we being basically everyone who's on Facebook right now, need to get a Google Plus? Well, it depends. Right now, I think that if you're not really interested in the testing uh, and everything else, then maybe it won't, might not be for you. However, if you are interested in learning, um, it wouldn't hurt to get a Google+. Plus. In terms of how far is it going to go, well, I don't think anyone's at the position to say whether or not this will be a Facebook killer or anything like that. And I'm not even really sure how far Google+, Plus will really go into diving in. After all, we're all used to Facebook, and we kind of can draw as many parallels as we want. Um, between uh, if Google Plus is a new thing and if Facebook is kind of going to go the way of MySpace. I'm not quite so sure yet. However, if you're interested in Google Plus and uh, you have a genuine interest in learning and being a part of that experience, definitely try to get an invite from someone um, and definitely sign up for the list. Uh, my suggestions and my personal opinion is that Google Plus is really, really neat. I think in terms of uh, a more professional social networking site, I think that Google Plus has a lot of features, especially because you're able to customize a lot more and things are very clear compared to Facebook. Uh, because Facebook is kind of an old horse now and it's been around so long and so many people are on there that the site itself is saturated with a bunch of junk that I think a lot of people aren't really interested in. And Google Plus is still really fresh, clean, and new. Now obviously it's because it's restricted to people just signing up and we'll see how long it lasts. However, I see big, big things, uh, uh, lots of possibilities essentially for group collaboration and work. Uh, already, again, the Hangout feature, which we'll, we'll have to come back some other time and revisit, is great. Um, it's great for collaboration. It's great for just, well, hanging out. So until next time, that was just a brief overview of Google+. And if you ever have any questions, comments, or concerns, here's a shameless plug. You can always contact me by going to mytjnow.com and go to contact us. You'll see me at the bottom. And if you ever need any information on what's going around Winthrop, hey, look, Winthrop endorses panties for project. Visit us at myteachernow.com. Thanks.